everybody, Wednesday in the Word with Wes, and uh, if you uh, live in the Bancroft area, you know that we've had a lot of snow recently, and a, a tool like this shovel has been indispensable. What this shovel lets us do and, uh, and forces us to do is move the snow from where we don't want it on a path uh, to the door of the, the church building here, and to, to place it where we do want it. It's incredibly helpful at this time of year. As I was thinking about uh, shoveling, I was thinking about uh, some words that were spoken in uh, Matthew's Gospel by John the Baptist, um, speaking about his role and speaking about the coming of Jesus and uh, what was going to happen when he comes. John says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather the, uh, his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with fire that never goes out. One of the things John reminds us about is that Jesus is coming into this world as judge. Uh, his winnowing fork or his winnowing shovel is in his hands. That was an essential tool in the ancient Near East, that when the threshing of the wheat was done, uh, they would come in with these tools, something like our pitchfork, and, and would take the wheat and harvest it into the barn or, or, or take it and place it into the barn, but the chaff would be separated and taken out and burnt and destroyed. And John's reminder for the people of his day and God's reminder for you and for me today is that one of the reasons that Jesus came into this world was to reveal himself as the judge. He would judge between the, the righteous and unrighteous. We believe that when Jesus returns, he will judge the living and the dead. And yet, we know that Jesus is a righteous judge, but he is also gracious and kind and compassionate. And so he made a way for us to stand in that judgment, not based on the, uh, the nature of our own righteousness or our own righteous acts, but based on the fact that, that he did what we could not do. He purchased our pardon and forgave our sin by dying on Calvary's cross. He gave his life so that we could live. And so when he comes in judgment to separate the righteous and the unrighteous, we can stand before him in confidence because of his gift of salvation. And so uh, let's thank Jesus that uh, the one who came as the judge, the one who will return as the judge, has also provided a way for us to be forgiven so that we could be found pure and holy and spotless and righteous in the midst of his judgment. He gave his life so that we could live and be forgiven. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you that uh, in your grace and mercy, you purchased forgiveness for us at the cross. You invite us to come to you and open our hearts, praying, asking for that forgiveness, and thanking you that one day, God, you will welcome us home, Lord Jesus, into your um, uh, presence for all eternity because of the cross and because of the forgiveness that comes through no other name but the name of Jesus. We look to you and we celebrate you now in Jesus' name. Amen.